One of the research topics of the Schubert group is organic thin thin batteries and these batteries are promising for applications for example where uh, flexible thin batteries are uh, necessary that can be produced for a cheap price. And one main advantage of these batteries is that they don't need rare or toxic metals. For example lithium ion batteries that you have in your cell phone or in the notebook you always have lithium that is quite rare or cobalt that is quite difficult to mine and they can also be produced in large quantities, for example, printing techniques or roll-to-roll -roll techniques. These uh, batteries consist of different compounds. There are two electrodes that the electrodes are storing the charge, and these two electrodes are separated normally by a separator to avoid the electronic contact between the electrodes. For transporting the ions between the two electrodes, you use an electrolyte. For the research of new materials for organic batteries, we start normally with the synthesis of the so-called active materials. That means the materials that can store the energy in the battery. This is done in a common chemical lab. And once we have these active materials, we test them in different formats. For example, in coin cells that you know from at home, or also in so-called pouch cells that are flexible, that can be also used in cell phones or in smart clothes. For the active material, if you want to test them, we have to do a so-called slurry. This is a, a mixture of different components. So you need the active material, then you need a conductive additive in order to transport the electrons between the active materials and also the current collector. And to bind everything together, you need a polymer, the so-called binder. This is like an egg in the pasta that you get a nice dough. This mixture is then mixed with a disperser and afterwards coated on a so-called torrent collector. And after the drying of these coated electrodes, they are punched out to electrode discs. And then the electrode and the polymer electrolyte, they are assembled in a coin cells. So you put the one electrode, then the polymer electrolyte or a separator with a liquid electrolyte and the other uh, electrode then you close it and then you put it in the crimper and you close the coin cell and afterwards you can take the coin cell that was prepared like that and test it with a battery cycler and in our group next to active materials we also do research on polymer electrolytes and this have the advantage that you can do these flexible batteries and you can also print the electrolyte directly on the electrodes if you are working for basic research, we use the small uh, so-called UV chamber. So we coat the electrolyte formulation on some supporting layer and we put it in the UV chamber. And afterwards you get the freestanding solid electrolyte that you can use as separator and as electrolyte in a cell. If we do more industry-related research, we have also UV conveyor belt in order to have the same conditions like they would be used afterwards in industry. In the field of printed batteries, actually, we have a project with the industry Avonic, and they are right now also uh, on the way to commercialization of these printed batteries with the results gained in this project. For the electrolytes, well, another property that we are investigating next to the battery performance in the coin cells is the ionic conductivity and therefore we have special conductivity cells. The polymer layer is put between two electrodes and then put in a climatic chamber so you can measure the conductivity at different temperatures. This is especially important for batteries because you won't be able to use the battery, for example, when you go skiing, you want to have your cell phone and then it will be minus 5, minus 10, minus 15 degrees C and the battery should still work, but also when you, for example, leave your cell phone in the car on a hot summer day, you don't want your cell phone to explode or you want to use it also afterwards again. So therefore it's really important to also measure these uh, properties at different temperatures. Mm -hmm.